This is problem number one on the sample test problems for test number two. Formulas for four functions are given below. For each of the functions, answer each of the following questions. One, is it a power function? If so, write it in the form kx to the p. Two, is it a polynomial function? If so, state its degree. Three, what is the function's end behavior as x goes to infinity? All right, we'll answer question one for all four of these functions. Is it a power function? So power functions look like k times x to the p. So can we rewrite this as a number, or that's your k, times x to a power. Square root is a power. It's a one-half power. So is it a power function? Yes. Let's answer the same question for b. 1 over 4x squared. Again, the goal is to write it as a number in the front. So I see a quarter. I want to write it as x to a power. x squared on the bottom is x to the negative 2 on top. So is that a power function? Yes. Let's see. 10 times pi to the x. You can see that the goal is to have the, um, the x sitting right here. That's in the base. But here the x is in the exponent. So is it a power function? No. Uh, this is an exponential function. And then finally d, uh, we've got 5 minus 2x squared plus 3x to the fourth. We see that in the uh, definition for a power function, there is simply no place for addition or subtraction. You can only have one term for a power function. So say no because of the addition and subtraction. Okay, let's answer question two. Is it a polynomial function? So polynomial functions look like um, uh, a n x to the n, and then some other number times x to the n minus one, and then eventually things that look more familiar, a three x cubed, a two x squared, a one times x, and then finally some constant we can call a zero. <clears throat> the things that distinguish a polynomial from not polynomial is that uh, it's only allowed to have um, whole number powers on the x's, uh, and then you can add as many of them as you want to. So uh, in part uh, A here, 5 square root of x, um, do we have a whole number power up here, 1 half? Let's see, that's the uh, first power, and that's the second power, and the third power, and there's simply no place to put a half power. Uh, so is this a polynomial? No. Um, and the problem is the, the square root. For part B, the power I see is negative 2, and again, we're looking up here at our basic uh, polynomial function. Is there any room in this pattern for a power of negative 2? And again, the answer is no. We're not allowed to have any negative powers in a polynomial. Uh, part C. Part C has a pi to the x, and again, the problem here is that the x is in the exponent, and there's no place up here for an x to be in the exponent, and so is this a polynomial, and the answer is no. Uh, it's still an exponential. And then part D, 5 minus 2x squared plus 3x to the fourth, that's a polynomial. It's got uh, sums of different uh, terms, that's okay. Uh, subtraction's fine too, and it's got whole number powers. We've got a fourth power, we've got a square, and we've got a constant term sitting by itself. So yes, this is a polynomial. Part three, what is the function's end behavior as x goes to infinity? Okay, um, so to figure out end behavior, uh, you have two choices. You can either kind of reason through things um, intuitively or you can think about the graph. We'll try both methods here. Uh, so the first method, um, thinking about uh, five square root of x and we're looking to think uh, as x goes to infinity. So if we send x to infinity, I'll write that very informally as five times the square root of something big. X is going to infinity, we just call that big. Um, and the square root of something big is 
Well, it's a little smaller, but it's still big. And five times something big is big. So for this one, uh, the end behavior is the, the it goes to something big. It goes to infinity. So we'll go ahead and practice with the um, limit notation. So the limit here is x goes to infinity of, and then the name of that function is f of x. And because we decided that uh, the whole thing becomes big when all is said and done, we symbolize that with an infinity. And we're not saying it ever actually reaches infinity, just that it gets um, bigger than any number we could care to name. So that's kind of the intuition way to do it. You could also think about a graph. Uh, if we graph 5 times the square root of x, so I'll put this down here. So the square root of x uh, is one of our kind of basic functions. So hopefully we know what the square root of x looks like. It's this. And so if I wanted to graph uh, 5 times the square root of x, that's just a vertical stretch. And so all of the values here will get 5 times as big. I'll kind of not quite draw it to scale, but maybe this is our function here. And as x goes to infinity, meaning run to the right, what happens to the points on the curve? So as you run to the right and stay on the curve, you find that we're going up. And that going up forever says the answer is infinity, the same infinity we got before. OK. Second part is B. We want to know what's happening as x goes to infinity. So we'll start the informal way first. So here we're doing 1 over 4 times something big squared. And if you take something big and you square it, well, it's even bigger. We'll just call it big. And if uh, you take 4 times something big, well, that's still big. So this is really 1 over something big. And 1 over something big. We're supposed to recognize that that gets really, really close to zero. Never actually gets there, but gets um, as close to zero as we could hope for. So that's the answer. The answer in this case is the limit is zero. So we'll write that here. Limit as x goes to infinity above g of x equals zero. And we can also think about the graph. So uh, forgetting about the four. If we just wanted to graph 1 over x squared, that part. That 1 over x squared is, uh, is one of our newer toolkit functions. And 1 over x squared looks like this. It's got two different branches. And everything is positive because of the square. So this is 1 over x squared. And it turns out that uh, in reality, I wanted to multiply that thing by a quarter in order to build um, 1 over 4x squared. So that's exactly a quarter of 1 over x squared. And so all the y values become a quarter of what they were, which is a vertical smush or compression. So all the y values, again, not to scale, are a quarter of what they used to be. And we get these two things. But ultimately, again, if we're sending x to infinity, which means run to the right, what's happening to the y values if you stay on this red curve, and you can see, indeed, they're getting closer to 0. Part C, 10 times pi to the x. OK, so first the intuitive way. We've got 10 times pi to the something big. And if you raise pi to something big, well, Treat pi like the number 3. It's, it's close enough for this example. So if I have 3 to some big power, like 3 to the 10th, which is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, 10 of them, or 3 to the 100th, which is multiplying 3 by itself 100 times, hopefully you're convinced that uh, it's quite big. So pi to a big power is big. 10 times a big number is big. And that means that the answer in this case is big or infinity. So here the limit as x goes to infinity of h of x is infinity. And if we're looking to graph this function, so here we want to graph the function y equals uh, pi to the x. 
and this is an exponential function. We've talked about that. And because pi is bigger than 1, this is an exponential growth function. So we will draw an exponential growth function, something like that. And in this example, we wanted 10 times pi to the x. So uh, multiplying by 10 is just another vertical stretch. So again, not to scale, but all the y values become 10 times what they used to be. And as x goes to infinity and you stay on the curve running to the right, what happens to your y values? You see that they go up without bound. So again, the limit is positive infinity because we go up forever. And then part d was our polynomial here, 5 minus 2x squared plus 3x to the fourth. So what you should know here is that um, the end behavior of a polynomial is determined entirely by its leading term. It's not always the one that's written first. It's the one that corresponds to the highest power. So really, all I need to think about is the 3x to the fourth. And so if I plug in 3 times something big to the fourth, something big to the fourth is even bigger. And then 3 times something big is big. And so ultimately, again, the limit here is infinity. Limit x goes to infinity of k of x equals infinity. And if we want to think about the graph of this function, again, we don't need to worry about the um, anything except for the leading term. And the leading term is this 3x to the fourth. So I'm just going to graph 3x to the fourth. And whatever the end behavior is of my graph, it's going to be the same as the end behavior of the, the full polynomial up above. So first thing we want is the graph of x to the fourth. And x to the fourth is just an even positive power. So that means it looks an awful lot like x squared. And if I wanted to graph 3x to the fourth, that's just another vertical stretch. Something like that. Three times as big. And so I, I can't guarantee to you what happens with the, the actual polynomial in the middle, like near the origin. But I know that eventually, if I run to the right and to the left, uh, it looks just like it does here on this graph. Eventually goes up and to the right and eventually up and to the left. So if we are running to the right, sending x to infinity, and we're trying to stay on the curve, you can see the y values are going up forever. So again, the limit is positive infinity. Number two, list the four functions from question number one in order from most dominant to least dominant as x goes to infinity. Okay, so we need to understand the sort of hierarchy of domination here for these different kinds of functions. Um, so hopefully we know that uh, there is a clear winner here in terms of dominance, and that's an exponential growth function. So the most dominant function here is the exponential growth, the 10 times pi to the x. And I don't really have good notation. I'm just going to say that that is kind of bigger than, and then I'll, I'll list the next most dominant function. OK, so thinking about these functions, uh, I'm going to look at the powers. Um, for the polynomial, again, the only thing that matters is the leading terms. So 3x to the fourth is all I care about there. And I'm comparing that to this power right here, this x to the negative 2. And then I'll compare it to that x to the half. And in terms of powers, um, you just grab the biggest ones you can see. And the most dominant ones are the biggest ones, and the least dominant ones are the smallest ones. So the biggest power that I see from the half and the negative 2 and the 4 is the 4. So that polynomial is the next most dominant. And of the remaining choices, uh, we have a power of negative 2 
and a power of a half, so the half is bigger, so the half wins. 5 square root of x is the next one. And then the least dominant one is the last one, is the 1 over 4x squared. And in fact, that's the only one that doesn't go to infinity. That one goes to zero. So certainly it's the least dominant of these choices.